So I wanted to shoot a video about the uh, connected I.O. system that I've stood up um, and where some of the info is, how do you get the info, and a bit about how I got introduced into it. So at a high level, there's a gentleman named Nate, and he has been... He started this as open source. He got a lot of support. And he took a flyer on Kickstarter. And I think his goal was something like $25,000. And last I checked, he was about 180 k so he's far exceeded it. And what is it? So at a high level, it's these 8266 chips, which is uh, node MCU is what it would be called. And then, uh, so this is a DIY version. His version has basically one power input, uh, a bit of voltage switching, and then some terminal blocks like these for connecting your wires. And so their presentation is better. And what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around in a minute and show you my version. But why is this a good idea? So what I really liked about it is it's just an N plus one architecture, which means in English you just keep adding another one and another one and another one until you get uh, as many zones as you want. Each board gives you six zones and one potential siren output uh, that works via relay. So I'll show you my my setup. Um, we'll talk through some things. And so I had about 21 zones. The original alarm had six zones. So what happened is I took a lot of different windows and that were zoned previously and I just pulled those zones apart. So now I have the ability to see individual windows in my house, individual doors. Um, so that's been one of the big advantages. And I actually plan to try put one in my safe to see if that will work remotely. So that's something I'm going to do. So here, let's take a look at the board. So let's look here. So what do we have? We have this chip that's called the Node MCU. So this entire thing comes as one. Uh, typically, I bought these on Amazon. I believe I paid $14 for a two-pack. And then what I've done is I've created these banks. So here is um, essentially D1, 2, then it skips to 5, 6, uh, 7, and then Rx. So these are the all the input pins. And then what I did here is just put two grounds together. This block over here... Um, my color identification tells me what's what. Uh, this is the alarm siren output. And this over here is the voltage input. Alternatively, you could just plug into this port right here. So very simple. Um, let's flip it over, show you what's on the other side. So as you can see, nothing advanced. What I've done is I really just ran wires. Um, if I did this again, I would buy strip boards instead of these. but essentially connecting negative and positive here, uh, bridging together the siren output so that I have two screws, mainly because these blocks only come in twos, uh, and then each point here with this being ground, all of these being tied to ground. What else have I done? I've got these feet that are like standoffs so that the board doesn't sit on metal at the back. And there you can actually see my numbering on the side. So something else I bought, I bought these while I was doing it on Amazon at the same time. Essentially two screws gives you a way to connect wires. Uh, this was something that I'd really recommend. I used it mainly for my 12 volts for my sensors, which made it a good win. That at a high level is what I did with this. Uh, and so now I'll show you my installation. So here's a look inside my panel. So. At the top here, this is a driver that I had on my old alarm. Essentially, you have your outputs for your speakers, and then following this wire over there, um, it gets basically voltage. So you can actually see over here, we have a little difficult to see, but we have one of those connector blocks there getting power from our power supply, and then a switched power, which tells the siren to fire. And then, other than that, um, top left, so this is my window sensor. That's another window sensor uh, device. This one here is my doors. And then this one here that's got the different color wires, that's my motion sensors. 
And so uh, you can see here, I use these blocks. This is my positive, this is my negative. And literally it's just a whole bunch of bridges so that there's power there that I can connect to. And as you can see with this wire here, that goes up to the relay uh, that ultimately powers the driver. So um, I have a couple glass brake detectors, but they're also running off of this. This power supply I'm pretty happy with as far as a find goes. It is a 5 volt and 12 volt output, so it has basically two outputs. And so I use the 5 volts, uh, runs up here into these boards, and all these boards are just daisy chained together. And then the 12 volts runs into the two uh, pieces here that ultimately powers those sensors as well as the top right. One thing I will do in the future is um, powering all future keypads, which run Cat5. So I'm just going to run 12 volts to them, and then I'll take the power from 12 to 5 at the source. And that's really it. The one thing I probably will do in the future is between um, this output is provide some sort of a backup battery. I had thought about putting a UPS in the whole thing, uh, but thus far I haven't. So that's really a look at the whole thing. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, again, I think I have around 24, 23 sensors hooked up right now, plus the siren. And uh, I actually didn't plan on doing this for protection, so to speak. My main driver was I had all these sensors in my house. I didn't want to buy Z-Wave sensors to replace it. So my five doors that I have that open, uh, that's been my primary focus. So. That is really it. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Uh, this seems like a great product. It's open source. It was easy to build myself and very happy with the results thus far. If you have any questions, let me know. And there'll probably be some uh, ESP8266 follow-up videos where I'm going to be trying to do um, a minified version for my safe and adding a temperature humidity sensor as well as my shutter project that I want to finish. So thanks and have a good day.